So this hand sewn tailored buttonhole doesn't need any machinery and is going to give you a really nice finish for any tailored garment. So let's consider this traditional right over left closure for a women's garment. Let's say this is a sample of a coat, right? For a button closure, you have to have an extension on your garment. So if you consider a sloper, which normally ends right on your center line, this thread trace, that represents our center line. So we've built in an extension here for our center front closure. Our garment needs to close where center front lines are living right on top of each other. So both sides have that full inch extension. How do you choose what amount of extension you need for your garment? So there are a number of things that you need to consider. What is your fabrication? What is the garment that you are creating? Uh, for this, we have a pretty thick coating, wool coating. So you want to have enough extension, one that looks appropriate for your design. And the other thing is the button needs to correlate with your fabric, not just stylized or stylistically, but you also need the right size. So for the weight of this fabric, we need a pretty hefty button. And this is an inch diameter or a line 40. And what that means is that our extension past center front needs to be that same diameter. So our extension is going to be a full inch. Our placket, which is the entire amount of where our button and buttonholes live, our placket is going to be that full amount of two inches. So depending on whether you have a built-in facing an extension like this, where it's just folded on the edge, or if there's a seam right here going into your facing on the back, it doesn't matter. This is what you need to house whatever diameter or size button you're working with. So extension equals the diameter of your button. You're going to thread trace where your center front line is so you have that position always what we need to do after this is determine our positions of our buttons and buttonholes you need to think about whether you want horizontal or vertical buttons usually button-up shirts will be vertical buttons except for the top button and bottom they'll go into horizontal but this keyhole button is very specific so this shape is allowing the shank of the button to live in this little extra space that the keyhole shape provides. The shank can be from a shank button that has that little metal extra piece on the back, or the shank can be from the thread shank that you applied when stitching your button onto your garment. And what that does it allows the button, when closed, and when the garment is pulled taut, when the wearer is moving around, or maybe it's a tighter fit, that garment is going to pull as much as it needs to, and that shank will sit right in that little space that you made with the keyhole shape. And ultimately, you want, when this is perfectly closed and it's sitting where it needs to, this should line up together perfectly, center front lines together. That means that the button itself is always going to be stitched right on the center front line. Now, relative to that, the button hole needs to exist where it needs to for this to close at center front. So if we take this horizontal keyhole button, for example, 
taking the width that we need of our buttonhole, right? And we're extending it slightly past center front, just allowing for a little bit of breathing room. So when that button is seated properly in that keyhole, then this should line up exactly with here. Center front lines on top of each other. And that rule of thumb measurement is about an eighth of an inch past your center front line. And this is a little bit generous, right? You want to be give it a little extra space if you are working with thicker fabrics or extra wide buttons. There's always other components to consider with this. So for this inch button, I want my buttonhole opening. The length or width of your buttonhole should be this exact diameter plus an eighth, give or take, depending on all your other circumstances. So I'm shooting for an inch and an eighth opening on this buttonhole. So let's find our placement. Let's say we're going to do another button and buttonhole, and this is going to be pretty close together because it's a sample, but for a coat like this, you would do it further apart for sure. And, it, and again, this is a right over left closure. So traditionally women's wear, that means our button is going to be on the left side, wearer's left side, and the buttonhole is going to be on the right side. So when we close it, it's going to be right over left. All the directions that I'm using as far as right and left, it's always referring to the wearer's side. Wearer's right side, wearer's left side. So here's our button position right here, let's just say. And this is something that you always want to measure out when you're doing a full garment. So it's perfect. In our button position on this vertical axis needs to be straight across from it. So I'm just marking where on this center front line it needs to be with this little mark. So here's my button and here is my buttonhole level right here. Okay, so we don't need this one for a minute. Let's just talk about this one. Also, your garments should always be interfaced. You want some structure in that area where you're applying buttonholes and buttons. They always need to be strengthened a little bit. So even if, if it's a sample, you want to test out exactly what your fabric's doing, how your button's gonna react. Maybe you need double interfacing. Maybe it needs to be on both sides. Okay, so our level of our buttonhole is right here. Remember that we need a full inch and an eighth to create our buttonhole opening. I want this to be exactly perpendicular with my center front line. Try to use sharp chalk. Maybe you have some other marking tools. And I'm just going to draw as neatly as possible an inch opening. And let me line this up right with my inch measurement on my ruler so I know to go a full inch inside of my center front line. I'm going to give myself a clear stopping point. And then I'm going to give myself an eighth of an inch past center front line. You want to consider what your buttonhole stitches are going to do to your buttonhole opening. If your buttonhole stitches are um, really tight and maybe you, you made your buttonhole markings really perfect, then it might end up tight for your button to get through the buttonhole. So try to err on being just a little bit bigger, just a hair bigger. Now for our button shank to sit right in that keyhole, keyhole has to go on this side, and I'm just going to give myself a little exaggerated marking, right? So here's our keyhole and the rest of our buttonhole opening. The best way to do this is to 
give yourself a perfect little hole right in your garment. So when you're doing other types of buttonholes, like a bound buttonhole, you're going to apply your buttonhole just to the front part of your garment. This would be the, the front area, the exterior side that everybody sees. And you're gonna do your entire buttonhole assembly on this side. You're not gonna do it through both layers like we're doing right now. This is only for a hand-sewn buttonhole that we would go through both layers like this right now. The way that we're doing this is by using um, a material called GIMP in a second, but also consider this. If you don't have GIMP, which is basically a wiry string, wiry thread, that's gonna give you structure all around your buttonhole. If you don't have this or you don't wanna do it that way, you wanna be a little bit quicker, you can take a machine stitch and run two stitches along this edge right here, pretty much creating a um, stability with your stitch. And it's a good reference for when you're putting your hand stitches in. So consider that, stitch in this entire area around here with the machine, about a, a 16th of an inch away from this center edge. But we're going to do a proper way. And really quick, I almost forgot, before I punch this hole in there, I want to give myself a basting stitched, a diagonal based all around this buttonhole because if my fabrics, my two layers of fabric shift around, then that's not going to be the best. So a really quick diagonal based all around this. With tailoring, you are doing a lot of fine work, hand work, and basting is a big part of it. Basting thread traditionally is a cotton, 100% cotton thread. And the reason is because it is toothy and it sticks in the fabric when you need it to, but then it's also very easy to just pull out. So I'm just doing a really quick diagonal stitch. It takes just two seconds and I'm going through both layers. And then after we cut open and do our buttonhole stitch, we can take all this out. Now we can punch a hole right where we want it to be for this buttonhole. Now I am trying to line this up perfectly with the level, the position of my buttonhole. And I want it to be exactly where I need it to be for that eighth inch past the center front line. And that's all you need, that tiny little hole right there. You can use a punch like this if you don't have one of these handheld hole punches. This is usually for a belt or other type of leather work, um, but these work just fine. You can find them at most hardware stores. After you get your hole punched, we can cut open this area right here. So I'm gonna take some really sharp scissors. They can be tiny snips. And I'm gonna be very careful that I'm not making jagged edges. I'm making a really clean edge. And I'm gonna cut all the way to my stopping point that I marked right here. Okay, there's our buttonhole opening. Now we need a thread to one, give us structure around this opening. And we also need a different thread to do the buttonhole stitch with. So GIMP is what they call a, usually a silk thread that's pretty wiry. This is not proper GIMP, but it does feel like it. You usually have a filament going through the center of it, and then it's tightly wound with another thread. If it's good GIMP, then it's all silk but you might have some synthetic parts in there too. You don't need a lot of it. You just need three to four, maybe five inches if you wanna be easier on yourself to manipulate this. And what the idea is, is we are wrapping this thread around this opening like this, so we can then include it in our buttonhole stitch and it's gonna give us a little bit of substance um, a little more profile to the buttonhole stitch 
and it's going to give us some structure for that edge. You don't necessarily need to worry about wrapping this all the way around. We just need to find this position and let this tail hang off past your opening on the inside of your buttonhole, this side, because this is the side that we're going to be starting on. Sometimes people baste this little tiny gimp thread into place. So you would take a thread that matched your fabric and do a tiny little stitch back and forth over this to keep it perfectly in place. The other thing is this is a black gimp or simulated gimp, what I'm trying to use as gimp. We would want a gimp that was closer to this. So for a real garment, you would use something that would match it more easily like this, or, um, you know, maybe you want that color to sort of enhance whatever thread you're using, but just consider that. Maybe you're putting black buttonholes onto a tan garment. The other thing we need is silk twist. Now silk twist is for buttonhole stitches, but you can get around with other threads. So if you don't have anything special and you just have machine thread, you can use a quadruple thread through your needle and just double up your thread and then put that two ply of your thread through the needle eye and then bring it back around until you have four strands hanging off like this. And that will give you a lot of extra bulk for that really small 30 tex thread that we usually stitch on the machine with. This is not special silk twist. This is just embroidery thread. And why this works just as good pretty much is I can use two layers of this and it still has that sheen, that luster to it. That's gonna give us a nice finish on our buttonhole. And also it is much harder to get it to knot up on itself when you're making these stitches. So this works just fine. An embroidery thread, typically, if you're working with actual silk twist, it's like a bigger tex, definitely. Um, so a wider gauge, a bigger gauge of thread. And you would also normally only use one ply of your thread. So you would bring your tail all the way up and you would be working just with a single thread when you were stitching. But like I said, I'm gonna double this up. I'm not going to knot the end of it. I'm gonna leave it free for a second. I am using a between needle. So betweens are smaller needles with a rounded eye. And this is for fine handwork tailoring. Sometimes people use it for quilting. I'm also going to run my thread since I'm using two ply of this. I'm going to run my thread through some beeswax and what that will do, not only will it help us prevent it from knotting up and twisting, but the wax will help lock in and sort of glue all those stitches together when we get our button hole stitches going around this. So there's our setup. We have our buttonhole thread in our needle. We have our gimp in place. I'm also going to put on one of these um, thimbles. So this is a leather thimble and I use my middle finger a lot when I'm pushing this through so it can get a little bit raw right there. So a leather thimble works really well for this. It protects it just enough and it's malleable so I can move easier with it on. Now let's start this. I'm going to turn my project this way. So my starting point is at this top side on the inside of it, away from our keyhole right here. And what I'm going to do, I don't necessarily need to have my GIMP on here right now for this exact moment. So if it's getting in your way, you can take it off for a second. I just want to lock in my thread with the tiniest little tailor tack. And I'm going through this top layer. I'm not going through everything. I'm trying to be really inconspicuous with this knot. So I'm biting into my material with just a few of the yarns of the fabric. This way it will be really hard to see. And also 
the smaller stitch that you make, the more it sort of binds up on the yarns of the fabric and is hard to come undone. So I just trimmed off those tails too, just to clean it up, okay? Your positioning of every stitch on here is so, so important. You are considering where, what height you are coming out for each one of these buttonhole stitches, and you're considering the spacing between each. The more consistent you are with this, the prettier your buttonhole will look. So keep an eye on this. Now, I need to make sure my gimp is inside of this. As we go along, our gimp needs to be included in this stitch every single time. So now we have our first buttonhole stitch about to start. We're in position right here. I have my thread coming out of the front of my project and I have chosen the position of my stitch, the height of my stitch, and I need to sort of stick to that every single time. Sort of try to make a mental note of how far away that is from the cut edge. You want to shoot for that every time you come up through your garment to the good side. Okay, with that, with that gimp thread in here, like this, I'm going to go right back into my buttonhole opening. And I'm going to come up right next to my previous stitch and see how intentional I am being with where this is coming out. I want it to be right next to, but not so super close that it's going to crowd my other stitch. And I wanna be at that same height away from my cut edge every single time. So before you take your needle all the way through your project, I'm going to take these two thread tails that are from my needle eye and I'm going to wrap them clockwise around the needle point and then you're going to pull your needle through again. And before I tighten all the way down I want to reposition this gimp so I know that it is being included and it's in the top right position. And so we have our first little purl stitch right here. When you are pulling this knot down, there are two positions you can sort of shoot for. And I think that it's really helpful to lay your project back down when you do this. And it's helpful that you are pulling from this thread and not just holding on to your needle and yanking it because the tension is very important here. You don't want to pull this super tight. You just want to pull it enough to where that knot is seated perfectly. So depending on whether you are pulling this thread away from it flat like this, or if you're pulling it upward, it's going to direct where that little knot, where that little purl stitch sits. I like this knot to land on this cut edge every time, but some people do it where this purl stitch lands on the top here. So you have two different looks. This way is a little bit stiffer too. You get a little more rigidity with the purl stitch on the cut edge. So let's do our second one then. That one looks pretty good. We have our little purl stitch and it's landing right on this cut edge. So let's try to be as intentional as possible with the placement of our next stitch. So I want it perfectly equal this time. I'm trying to get that same width away from the cut edge and same spacing from my last stitch. While my needle is in my project, 
I'm going to wrap this around clockwise and pull. When I get close to it, I let go of my, my needle and I come up close to it. I set my project down and I pull this, these two threads flat, but away from it. So that's it. We're going to go all the way around this entire buttonhole with this. You have a lot of moving parts here. So each time I'm going to shoot for that same consistent spacing with this stitch. Leave my needle in my project, bring those two yarns, two threads clockwise around my needle and pull it out. So it's very important that you are going in the same direction every time when you wrap your threads around your needle while it's in the work. Um, you need to go that same direction every time. One, because it gives you a consistent look to your purl stitches, but two, that's the only way it locks in on itself. And this is what I'm talking about. So you always go that same direction. Don't go opposite direction every once in a while. You have to keep that same direction. And the pulling of this, your tension, you're trying to give that same consistent tension when you are seating that purl stitch all the way down, cinching it down. Try to keep the consistent tension that's going to give your work a lot um, cleaner look. So I'm coming up here onto the keyhole and there's a couple of things. You don't have to cut these away, but I like to, um, and what I'm talking about are the tiny corners, right? You see the circle and where the line intersects with the circle. There are these small corners right here happening which is really hard to um, contain with your buttonhole stitch. So what I like to do is just clip them off very carefully. And it's a little bit prepping our buttonhole for this keyhole shape. And when you don't do that, uh, most of the time, those tiny little corners stick out from between your stitches and it just doesn't look as good in my opinion. And as you go around this keyhole in this shape like this, you are going to have the purl stitch try to condense in on itself. It's going to get squashed together going around this curve and the outer edge of your stitch is going to fan apart from each other. So it's okay that it does that. You just, again, want it to be consistent and um, you want to get it as close as it can be without those purl stitches sort of affecting each other. They say it takes about 100 hand-sewn buttonholes before a person has mastered them. So if you're doing your very first one and it looks like garbage, that's exactly where you should be. Do more, practice more. Okay, and so I'm just going to continue around this shape and you want to still stay consistent with your positioning as you go around this keyhole and it becomes a little bit more difficult, just slightly more difficult to try and manipulate this gimp 
around the keyhole shape while you're putting your stitch in. This is almost finished, but you see how much thread this takes, and I'm just about out. This is pretty much all I can, um, the minimum amount I want to work with at this ending point. So I'm going to pretend like we got these last three or four stitches done at the end and show you how to finish this off. You still have your gimp included in this stitch, and let's say we got right here to this stopping point, okay? Now this first stitch that we did, that little tailor tack to lock our thread in, that is where we want to end. And that should be right after our last buttonhole stitch right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel around right to that end corner, including that gimp thread, because what we're gonna do is just create a little bar tack and you're doing that around these open-ended gimp threads and right at that same place that you put those tailor tacks in so you can try to hide them and i'm just going through both layers that entire width of your buttonhole stitches and you can do this two or three times depending on um, what you think looks good and how much thread you have like the thickness of your thread and then enter your needle back in one more time towards the back and see that would be our little bar tack ending our button thread we should have a few more stitches right there Try to be generous with the thread that you give yourself when you thread your needle. Err on giving yourself more rather than less to finish it off. And this is the back. Your back is never going to look as pretty as your front, right? Because we're just working from the front and we are focusing on our stitch position from there. To finish this buttonhole stitch, you are just going to pass this thread under your stitches like so. I don't normally do it the entire length, but you can, and I don't have the thread to do this, but you can do this back and forth two or three times. And I try to get a different position, like picking up different yarn threads and different yarns of the fabric. So it really locks it in. It's not just going back in the same tunnel that I came the first time. So that will Cleanly finish it off back and forth between those threads. If you have like a felted wool, this hides it really well. And then just clip your needle off. You want to also clip these gimp threads pretty much as close as you can get it. You can do that trimming of your gimp thread before your tack so you can get it perfect with that and then just tack over the very ends of it and again this gimp thread would be a lot better if it were matching right it will look a lot less sporadic than this does you can tell the difference so this one was done with a double thread using that same embroidery thread super shiny this one was using a single to see the difference. 
it takes more stitches you get a smaller purl stitch on the end but that's it to put your button on you can also quadruple your thread or you can use what old school people really like to use as high mark thread it's an american made 100 percent cotton glazed it is very strong it's used for carpets shoes um, we used to use it in the ballet and the wings when we had quick fixes during performances. And this is the thread that will hold buttons on forever. So if you can get your hands on some high mark, that's really good. Okay, let's test this out. Okay. Yeah, and that looks like it's creating a closure with our two garment pieces lining up on center front line. That's what we want. All right, perfect.